What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are doing well out there. Time to get fully charged because it is time for Tesla earnings. We will go through the high-level financials. We'll take a look at some of the stuff that's going on over at Tesla. You definitely have a slowdown on the automobile side, but there's some silver lining in here. We'll talk about that as it relates to Tesla, but maybe some other companies as well. Take a look at the all-important delivery numbers, and then we'll come over here and look at this from a financial perspective. Take a look at some of the in-depth numbers. We'll also take a look at the technical perspective, as I'm seeing during the regular trade, share of Tesla were down by more than three or four and three quarters percent. And in the after hours, shares are moving. The conference call just closed. And I will take some of the highlights that I found here as I was listening to the call. We'll talk about them. We'll talk about the Cybertruck as they announced a delivery event happening at the end of November. That was expected at the end of Q3. Now we are getting it closer towards the end of Q4. We'll talk about all of that as we dissect Tesla earnings. Over the last year, shares of the company performed relatively well, up about 16%, but year to date, this one has been in full throttle, up over 124%. So all the Tesla fanboys out there that might be crying based on today's results, just keep in mind, it's been absolutely fantastic. Those Q3 numbers came in, revenue coming in at $23.35 billion, that was good for just 9% growth year over year on that revenue side. They missed on basically both the top and the bottom line. So you're going to have the haters come out tomorrow and point to the fact that this company has a pretty massive price to earnings still, price to sales, pretty much any way you slice this company, it is still richly valued and you're growing at a single digit mark on that revenue side. Elon Musk got on the conference call and really talked down interest rates, but I want to remind you that yes, interest rates are historically, and we'll put this in air quotes, high right now, but they are, that's just in recent history. 5%, 6%, 7% interest rates actually aren't particularly high as it relates to a much longer time frame of history. So if you think interest rates need to go down for this stock to perform, well, not sure that's going to show up anytime soon. Elon Musk declined to give any updates on that Tesla bot that they showed off on their YouTube channel and social media feeds. I think Elon Musk quipped that last year the robot could barely walk and now it is doing yoga. He said updates will be shared online. Very important product. I think not just for Tesla, but for broader manufacturing as well. I do believe robotics and automation, maybe not a humanoid robot, but certainly those types of things going to be big for a lot of companies, including Tesla. Not long ago, the company lowered the price on their coveted full self-driving software. Elon Musk says it's just wanted to make it more affordable. I doubt it. I, I doubt it. I actually think this is way overpriced and they've constantly said, well, we're going to price it based on its value. And I think Tesla internally way overvalues full self-driving, way overvalues. Is it cool? Is it neat? Is it, does it have its use cases? Yes, but is it a must have if you have one of these cars? It is a must, is it a must have if you drive a car? Absolutely not. Now, Elon Musk on Giga Mexico, they talked a lot about Mexico. Based on the high interest rate environment, they are essentially, they didn't come out and say it, but uh, they're basically on pause with this Mexi Mexico Gigafactory. In fact, they said later in the conference call that just expanding their footprint in Texas, where they have a, a massive site where they can expand, they said that they could continue to simply expand there. I would not expect this Mexico factory up and running really anytime soon. First time we ever have gotten any confirmation on Cybertruck reservation. Tesla says they have over 1 million reservations. Now it's pretty easy to reserve a Cybertruck. It's a different thing to pay the price that they are gonna want. That's what we haven't seen about the Cybertruck. Yes, very affluent people are gonna be able to afford these things. Very similar to a Model S and a Model X, 
my guess, when this Cybertruck was announced, it was like a $35,000, $40,000 truck. A lot of people made the reservation for that. When this truck actually becomes available and Tesla sends you an email and says, you can come buy your Cybertruck, how many people are going to have the down payment and how many people are going to be able to get the financing for a truck, I believe, after tax and after all said and done, is probably up there with the high-end Ford Chevrolet trucks that are out there that are 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe even a hundred thousand dollars. Now we're talking about a much different group of people. I don't think this is going to be a truck. Many people on that reservation list are actually going to be able to afford in terms of ramping up those deliveries. Elon Musk was pretty specific. He said, after the initial deliveries, you're looking at about an 18 month window. So you're not going to reach really full production, if you will, on that truck until 2025. They said they'll end up with about 250,000 Cybertrucks per year. To give you some context, the Model 3 and the Model Y is producing per quarter. Again, this is a combination of two vehicles doing about 400,000 of those vehicles per quarter. I don't necessarily see the Cybertruck costing as much as an S or an X, but it's definitely going to cost more than a 3 or a why now also just reiterating what Elon Musk said that you're going to have 12 to 18 months before it's a significant positive cash flow contributor to the company as well. I think they're tamping down the financial impact of Cybertruck, although I think kind of the media and the hype will probably be good enough. But from just a financial perspective, when they report their financials, I actually don't think this is going to be a meaningful contributor for a while. You're probably looking out into 2025. It's really that high volume, low cost vehicle if they can somehow pump one out. I mean, I tell you what, with the tax incentives and things that are out there, you can get a Model 3 for like 30,000 bucks, 35,000 bucks. And if people are kind of balking at that price, you know, they really need kind of a lower cost car. And again, 1130 Gigafactory, Texas. I hope my name is called. I would love to show up and buy one of those cars. I'm not sure I'll be there though, or I'm not sure I'll be invited. Now, your total automotive vehicle revenue is up just 5%. And again, they talked a lot about margins, but just your revenue up just 5% as they've experienced a lot of cost cutting, at least on the price that you're paying for the vehicles over the last year. We'll also see it a little bit on the delivery numbers, particularly the high end and vehicles. Positive sign though, is you have this energy generation and storage revenue. Th this to me is the most exciting part of this company, not just this company, but well, probably one of the broader themes that we'll be talking about a lot in the stock market over the next uh, couple of years is really energy generation and storage. It doesn't necessarily have to be quote green energy or environmentally friendly energy generation and storage. It's just going to be a, a big topic that grew 40% year over year. It was a one point, call it $1.1 $1 .1 billion business last year up to closer to 1.6 sequentially quarter over quarter you saw an increase there as well operating margins this is essentially a profit margin over at tesla just on a steady ski slope down we're now down into the single digits just 7.6 percent so elon musk talked extensively on the call that people are having trouble buying these cars because they're going and getting them financed and they're getting seven eight nine ten eleven 12% interest on the financing and that just jacks up the price. A car that used to maybe cost three to four or $500 per month is now costing quite a bit more than that. I'm of the opinion that interest rates actually really aren't that high yet. And we'll obviously see where they materialize and go going forward. Big decline in Model S and Model X production. Also on the delivery side, you're seeing those slide, the more expensive vehicles also probably difficult to get financing there. Even if you're a wealthy individual, you, you, you're you not paying for these cars with cash. It's actually, actually pretty stupid to actually pay something that depreciates in value with cash. What I am seeing though, is you are seeing a lot of people going more to leasing these cars. I've seen some lease deals that people have posted on Twitter where you can lease these cars for like 250 a month. That's gonna be the lower end model three, those were up 30%. On that energy business, it was a lot of storage deployed. So they have a solar business. They're putting kind of the solar roof, if you will. And then you finally have storage. Those are the batteries that are storing that energy. The solar actually declined, but that storage deployed, we'll see the profit on this business here pretty soon up 90%. Guys, just giving you a little hint right now. If you want to make some investments, 
here's a good business, here's a good sector to look into. If Tesla is growing that business 90%, it's showing you there's obviously huge demand for that business. And again, in this economic environment, they have a business unit growing 90%, okay? So there is a sector I would really look at in terms of investing over the next 12 to 24 months. We've been talking about it a lot here on the channel. It is following through as it relates to the growth that you're seeing. And then finally, your supercharger stations. This is the moat around the business and Mercedes and all the other EV makers are realizing it. And Tesla is actually, I think, kind enough to allow them to use a lot of those supercharger stations. I didn't think they had to do that. We know profit has fell off a map, but I'm going to I'm going to keep coming back to it, guys. Energy storage business, 1.6 billion dollars in revenue. Here's your energy storage cost. That was at 1.18 billion dollars. That was actually lower than the previous quarter, lower here. So we've driven down the cost on that storage business and we've increased the revenues. This is a high, high, high quality business, particularly based on the growth rate. Now, Tesla being as valuable as it is and a lot of attention being on the cars, the, the stock and the company is not gonna be rewarded for it. Your challenge as an investor is you need to go out and find the companies that are gonna benefit from this trend as well. Tesla's only gonna be a small piece of this market. They're gonna be a big piece, but they're only gonna be a small piece of it. And you're seeing that it's growing 90% and they're growing the profits as well that is going to trickle down to a lot of other companies as well. I get paid to put this research out there, so I can't give you the full list of the companies, but I basically just gave you the roadmap of what you need to look for. Your income from operations fell off the map down about $1.8 billion. It was $2.4 billion a quarter ago. It was nearly $3.7 billion, nearly $2 billion higher a year ago. As they, again, they continue to lower prices at Tesla. It is putting a crimp on their financials. Now, they don't really have anything to worry about from a financial perspective. They've got a boatload of cash. They've managed this company very well from a financial perspective. You'd have to have a very, very extreme downtrend where like an 08, 09 situation where a company like this would, would end up being in real, real financial distress as, as customers just simply wouldn't be buying $30,000 cars, let alone $75,000 pickup trucks that look like they came off a spaceship. Cash flows still look good. I mean, here's the thing is this is why you always come through the entire financial. So we pull down a net income number that's ugly. Again, $1.9 billion. Last quarter, you're at 2.6. Last year, you're at $3.4 billion, okay? You're all the way down to south of $2 billion. But here's your net cash provided by your operating activities. Now, it's nowhere near where we were last year. We were up over $5.1 billion, but... Look, still producing a respectable $3.3 billion last quarter. It was three quarter before that it was 2.5. So we're actually moving in the right direction there. Capital expenditures did tick up to $2.5 billion. So, and these are the two most important lines, I think, as it relates to Tesla. They've got some other stuff going on here on the cash flow statement. But what I would look at is cash flow running the business and then your CapEx. Because obviously this is a manufacturing company. They have to spend CapEx to build more cars to generate more operating cash flow, 3.3 versus 2.5. We're getting razor thin there to where you kind of go cash flow negative on the operating side minus off CapEx, but still not there quite yet. Now, from a technical perspective, we've been in a beautiful uptrend for a little while. We've been kind of riding this black line higher, low, higher, low, higher highs, higher highs. Hasn't been confirmed more recently. We've more or less started to go sideways, made a decisive breakdown in, again, this is in the after hours. A lot of stocks come under pressure today. These financials gave you really no reason to run out and buy shares of Tesla. Elon Musk on the conference call didn't give you any real reason to buy the shares either. And then finally, you have the Cybertruck as well, which is, I I, I mean, look, I, I can't wait to get one. I hope to God I get an email and says I can come pick one up on 1130. I doubt it. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and be a fanboy and say, this truck is going to turn around the company. I, I think it's going to fall somewhere between the Model S, Model X, and a Model 3 and a Model Y in terms of production. In fact, it might come much closer to a Model S and Model X based on the pricing and these 1 million people that have 
reserved cyber trucks they're going to get a rude awakening when they realize how expensive this car is going to be and you really don't have volume drivers for this company and two number one you get interest rates to decline and if that doesn't happen you need a cheaper car at volume and at scale and we don't even have an announcement on that from tesla let alone some kind of prototype or car in the works from a technical perspective though you're you're not overly concerned you do have support for the shares down here at about 210 to 11 you would not this is when you start getting worried as a shareholder if, if you're in tesla and you don't want to watch i mean sometimes when tesla goes down people get like the biggest tummy aches and they start crying well you sell here you sell here right at like 200 maybe even 199 or something because if you break this level retesting these levels lower i have a green box on this one i don't get excited about this one until you're probably south of about 170 you get south of 170 a lot more things open up from a valuation perspective you can kind of play the long game with tesla down at those valuations and at those prices at this 230 240 level if we're going to kind of languish along when it turns to deliveries and profit margins i don't know how much patience investors are going to have but what would be healthy for the stock is is really consolidation sideways it's gonna be hard to push above 280 I think it's going to be hard to break below 200. So in my opinion, probably the path of least resistance for Tesla and really for a lot of stocks that are up over 100%. In fact, this stock up over 124% in the year that we are in. Look, you can't sustain that. Going sideways is likely and likely a good thing for Tesla and its shareholders. Again, consolidation between 210 to 280 for Tesla probably the recipe I'll be prescribing to the company in the coming weeks. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. Where do you think Tesla is heading? I hope you all have a wonderful day. We'll be back again on Friday to discuss these results and more on our Fang Stock Recap Show, where every Friday we do recap the news for Tesla and all the other major tech stocks. Hopefully, guys, have a wonderful week. We'll see you on Friday. Good luck with your investments.